everyone. Um, again, appreciate John being here. John's the man. And I'm just going to let you do your thing because this is what you do. And I'm just going to basically sit back and listen so, and awesome. learn and absorb the knowledge, basically. Good, so. good, cool. Well, first thing that uh, I want to thank Jesse so much um, in trusting me to, to present this webinar. And the one thing that you're going to get is value. Uh, the only thing that I'm going to forward you to is a, a downloadable document for, for attending. And so what I want you to do is go to the text in to 657 Four 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 fifteen hundred, and you can get a, a piece from a valuable piece that will support you in your recruiting and leadership. So I'll give you that number again at the end, but I'll give it to you again now. And you'll text in Cheplak, C H E P L A K to six five seven four 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 fifteen hundred. So what I'm going to go is I don't know if I'd call it the fast and the furious. Uh, we've got thirty minutes, but I'll I'll. Uh, I'll go longer. I, I tend to do that anyways because I, I want to give tremendous value. And here's what I want to share with you. This isn't my wonderful story. Uh, this is a story because there are just a lot of theorists. And, and, and again, with all due respect, um, I come from the trenches. I actually recruited real estate agents as a branch manager and then as an executive led a multi-office organization. So it's not someone that saw an opportunity in our industry to exploit and become the recruiting guru. I did the work. And have been committed to it and and i would say i have not mastered it because i think mastery is something that goes on over time but the, the really good news is i was able to with the principles that i'm going to share with you that you're going to find counterintuitive that are not because that you know i like to you know just be the polar opposite because it's the truth and i'm willing to go with the truth this stuff works and if you follow these simple principles you can win uh, but i want to give you some examples Here's, here's an example of some of the victories that have taken place. And keep in mind, too, here's a gentleman that we work with, Mike Pruitt down in Atlanta, just a great leader. And ultimately, they do the work, um, but partnered with our framework. You know, this, this was a week of recruiting. I'm going to do a little math with you all there. You know, that's about uh, 20 million in production. And let's just throw out, I don't know, let's just say that's $500,000. Well, all of those agents were added, okay? At a 70-30 split. So anyone doing out the math out there, that's 150,000, okay, retained by the brokerage in one week of recruiting. 150. Now, now let's say that I don't know on average one stays 10 years, one stays five, three. Who knows what it is? But I, let's just do a little math. Let's take that, you know, that 150,000 times six or seven total years of that. Now that's a million dollars, right? Retained by the broker. So, you know, the, here's the thing I want to share with you guys. It's so important. It's the question to ask you if you're running a team. It's a question to ask yourself if you're running a brokerage. So how much lift and haul? How many leads are you buying? Tell me about your CRM. Tell me about all the appointments you go on. Tell me about all the drip campaigns. Tell me about, tell me about, tell me about uh, the showings, the open houses to close one transaction that may in your market have a $6,000 gross value. That may have a $9,000 gross value you know, gross one time. And yet I'm talking about right here, you know, something over time can be a million dollars and broker owner managers and team leaders don't even have a system that equals. I mean, this is a multiple of what transaction is, but the point I want you to get that you could leave, download the document, text in and leave. If you capture that one point, You've got, to have, you've got to treat recruiting like you do generating buyer and seller leads. So here's an example and cute little comment. Um, you could have done that three years ago if we would have implemented and listened to me, okay? Uh, here's another gentleman that many folks probably are familiar with too. Um, you know, 100 little 100 agent companies back when I started working with, with this gentleman, Anthony Lamacchia, um, and it's a two-step. He doesn't just take anyone. Um, eight recruits in a week. And it's easy to throw numbers out at you guys. And this isn't about me, it's about them. And it's about, it could be you. Not just bringing recruits, because I showed you the dollar return that you guys can get, okay? But this was a two-step. And the two-step meaning, after there was an agreement to join and he's still recruiting this way, oh, by the way, you gotta come back for a second interview. We're not playing the body shop game. So, there's the substance. Let's get right into it. Here's what I want you to think about that's really exciting for you. If you want to grow, if you want to keep chasing leads, listen, your lead, your technology, your software, it's all important. But everyone's aiming at the wrong target. 
Because tell me how many leads you're going to convert, generate, nurture, and tell me about all your amazing software and all the things you have if you don't have the right people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, capacity of the team has always been an issue, and those bodies are producing, you know, when you adopt someone onto your team, you're adopting their SOI and all of that stuff. So it's so critical to, to have that available. We have numerous, we look at teams, we have numerous teams where they take a look and an agent that's on that team has, has um, contributed after their retained dollars, a million dollars. Right. Term. I mean, a million dollars to pay the bills with and have some profit. So here's what's exciting for you. In surveying, and I just, I don't know, I'm the sharpest tool in the shed, Jesse, and I know you're a sharp dude, but I think the one thing that always wins is just hanging out a long time and, and not going away, being consistent. And so I ask a lot of questions. Here's what's really cool. In surveying thousands around the world, 80% no recruiting drift campaign. This is your competitive landscape for recruiting guys, by the way. Mm -hmm. okay? 90% no re video recruiting initiative, 60% no social media initiative, 95% not making recruiting prospecting calls consistently. Now here's what's interesting team leader, I see this with love, but doggone it, it frustrates you, your agents won't make their calls every day. <laughs> well, maybe they're mirroring us, right? So 90% of $5 million producers and above have not received a recruiting call in over two years. Now, here's a little caveat. I know what I've found, Jesse, you too probably should look around. A lot of the teams, their avatar is that person that's, that's maybe done under 2 million or, or maybe done five to 15 transactions and they've had enough pain to, to realize, man, this thing's tough on our own. Um, maybe we need to be somewhere where it's a different environment. The leads are provided. We follow a structured system. I just want to let you know, Here's the piece. We have a team uh, that's bringing in eight, 12, and $13 million producers on team splits. Right. So you guys, it's not about the money. It's not about the money, it's the experience they have with you, period. Okay? Here's the biggest mistake everyone's making in recruiting. This is, this is how we're taught to prospect for buyers and sellers, and this is how we're freaking recruiting. It's, it is, what everyone's doing is they're going to an ATM machine, the bank account, and they're trying to make withdrawals with their debit card and they haven't made any deposits. There's no money in the bank. What I want to share with you guys is this, you've got to make deposits in the business relationship equity account. It's not a magical script. As a matter of fact, you need to dump your calls to action, okay, on your recruiting dialogues, marketing pieces. It creates friction. And, and I'll share some statistical data. This is a universal marketing rule, but it plays very well here. So you think about this, 95% of your agents that you're targeting right now trying to recruit, they have no intent. They're indifferent. They're not thinking about making a move. They're just not. If you've got 100 agents in the marketplace, 95 of them aren't going to bed at night going, I wonder what Team Smith has for me. Boy, I wonder what that is. But yet, so, so what we're doing is we're saying the right things to the wrong people. Stop leading with conversion language. Only 5% have consideration where the relevant conversation with them, Jesse, is going to be one that talks about making a move. Lead with value, period. Right. Yeah, because I think most people, it's kind of like if you think of real estate as a whole, right? We don't wake up one day and say, oh, I'm going to sell my house. Usually it's going to be driven by life events or something like that. And what happens with consistent branding and delivering value, or if we use like Chris Lindahl as an example, all of his advertising, basically, you are a top of mind at that moment when that moment happens. So if you're delivering value all of the time, what you're doing is that you're getting permission to occupy some brain space in there. And basically what you're developing that relationship very subtly. So when the moment comes available, whenever that's going to be for them, whatever the impetus to, to drive that change to go from indifferent to consideration, then you're top of mind at that moment in time. It's so powerful. 100%. And yet it's interesting, you know, people, and, and, and I can share it with people. They'll mm -hmm. pay it be to have me come out and speak and tell it to them. And I still go back to, we default to being, to, to being salesy, feature done. Remember <laughs> right. this, you guys, everyone wants to buy. No one wants to be sold. Right. You know, 
there's a situation that comes up a lot. If you're listening to this, watching this now live or um, later on, you know, how many times have you had a recruiting interview that went so well? And they didn't join on the spot. You went to follow up with them and they ghosted you. Well, they ghosted you because you thought it went well, because you said what was important to you. Well, remember this, you guys, there's three important subjects to human beings, the three most important subjects, me, myself, and I. Mm -hmm. So the reason they're not responding to you after what you thought was a great interview is you did not connect with them where they're at. See, and you'll see this a little bit later on the slides. Here's what you need to do. You need to create an experience of what it's going to be like when they join, before they join. Mm -hmm. All you want to do is be in second place so that when something happens, you're the first choice. Exactly. No, it makes so much sense. So much sense. So here's some, some, some life principles, in, and I think that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure you've heard or seen something like some of these before, some you haven't. But I, I think this will bring us back and bridge that gap from working with a buyer and seller lead to working with the recruit. People don't believe what they're told. They believe what they experience. Create the experience of what it's going to be like when they join before they join. Mm -hmm. So discovery is the highest form of human persuasion the number one way to facilitate a human being to a choice or a change when you're running uh, friction based conversion language at them all the time oh my gosh your your check could be this big your split right. could be this big. your stocks could be this big it's ridiculous yeah you're also leading with something that causes them to jump when they get recruited the same way again too right <laughs> you're making the split the most important thing versus delivering value and talking about, you know, a culture and a tribe that is there to kind of learn and work together. And I think that's, that's something that's really critical. Yeah. Well, it is people, you know, it's kind of what you're, you're moving into people uh, will leave you based on how they joined you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every time. So, so if you're focused on a money based relationship, I'm going to give you a little news slash, ladies and gentlemen, there's never been enough money in a relationship to keep it together. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think the national divorce rate <laughs> talks about that. <laughs> so, so the next piece too, I want you all to look at your messaging, your dialogues, your email drip campaigns, your videos, which you should have if you want to really make a lot. So if you want to make a lot of money, you could not change a single thing on your team tomorrow and go on a recruiting retention initiative. Change nothing. Change nothing. I got news for you game over and we've got many examples of this so we choose with our heart and justify with our mind stop leading with logic you need to make psychological and emotional bonds think about this people ask me what's the great model out there best model come on john you can tell me i know you work with them all but secretly <laughs> tell me okay i'm gonna tell you a secret ready it's the leadership model because I can show you a split model with one brand and someone's failing in it. What's the common denominator leader? I can show you a, um, a, a revenue share model. You know, it's, it's, it's like McDonald's. It's across the board. It's the same. Well, McDonald's has the stores that fail too. I have to know someone who McDonald's brings in to buy out when an operator fails. The system's the same. The model's the same. It's leadership. And you may say, oh, no, I think it's about money and splits. Okay, well, if it's about money and splits, then how come the rest of your folks haven't left you then? Mm -hmm. There's the truth. When people will say, oh, the, the, I can't get people to come over because of this or that, or they won't move over. we got to move our split. Really? So, but you, you're not having to move or change your splits with your people that you already have. So why don't you reverse engineer what you're already doing? Remember this. Ladies and gentlemen, leaders, the growth of your business is inside your business, not outside your business, period. So um, here's one piece to know because we've looked at, we've surveyed a thousand broker owner managers, team leaders twice now in the last 10 years. How many contacts on average does it take before a licensed agent makes a move? It takes 14 contacts of value transference a video that has some business building tips, an email that has three steps to getting massive traffic to your open house, the seven steps to get the listing price right. Like, like sending messaging 
to your competitors agents that educates them because it's called getting people to make a micro commitment what's a micro commitment every time someone consumes a piece of my content that has value they're making a micro commitment and every major commitment move see people are trying to join well no amygdala kicks in fight or flight kicks in gone message doesn't connect what we're doing is we just a series of micro commitments so that what happens there have been so many deposits when the next natural step is well i guess i just need to join literally have people saying buddy anthony lamaki just said it yesterday see now john i said someone call yesterday say i'm joining been watching your videos for two years exactly but and, and what's interesting if you watch anthony lamaki's videos that he does for free not one has not one has a call to action on it right Give people value okay so um here's some other pieces for you guys to take away and then we'll, we'll get into some of the stuff we're not going to wait and resist human nature we're going to handle objections in advance you know one of the things in the calling that we do you've got to make promises don't try and recruit people in the first interview you're going to lose them why would i fight human nature i just shared the statistical data with you it takes 14 contacts but you're going to gain the empirical data have fun gaining the empirical data so what we do is we handle the objections in advance. They're, they have sales skepticism. Your job in your communication, and even when you do get the appointment, meet with them, is remind them that you are not going to. You make the promises. I'm not going to try and recruit you. Maybe, hopefully, maybe in the future you do join. I'm not going to talk about my company. I'm not going to talk about your company. We're going to talk about the only thing that matters, you and your business. Treat them as if they were one of your agents. Demonstrate your competency and relevancy as a leader. That's the thing. Otherwise, jump in the barrel of monkeys with everyone else doing the, but we're better than they are. Woo! <laughs> so, um, hmm. one thing to remember, if you're having trouble and you're making prospecting calls and you're not getting the conversions you get, I'm gonna get to you to the conversions you should be experiencing, okay? Many times it's not what you're saying. It's that you didn't send something of value to them prior. You're going cold traffic. You're going cold. So you've got to make the deposit. Then when you are making your recruiting call, you've invoked the law of fair exchange. You've invoked the law of reciprocity. And we use what we call a did you get call. Did you get, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we talked about going to the ATM machine, making deposits, 33, 50, 33. to remember this. And this again comes from, you know, not being the sharpest tool in the shed, just hanging around for a really long time. So if you are putting out good content consistently across all channels, okay. And you're following the right language patterns on the phone, one out of three people should say, yes, I'll meet with you. Mm. One out of three. And this is for an, uh, a recruiting appointment, basically, whether it's a coffee or just to kind of chit chat and build a relationship. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. One out of three said, I'm willing to meet. If it's less than that, either you've got a problem in your language pattern when you're talking on the phone, uh, or you have sent them, haven't sent them an item of value. She was going right at them cold. Okay. Now, here's the big one that can be helpful to, you know, you got to get your ego out of the way when it comes to recruiting. You, you know, I've just kind of done this since 1995, actually doing it into a branch, into a company, and now, you know, throughout the world, supporting leaders like y'all here. So this is just part of the game. If you can keep a 50% or lower no-show reschedule ratio, you're killing it. Yes. Now, why do I see your kid? Well, because leaders will say to me, well, if they can't even call and, 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 and reschedule the appointment or they know show on it, that's fine. That's cool. I've had people play that game on me six months later. John, you know, I'm still struggling with recruiting. Yeah. How's that being, you know, they're not showing. If someone's going to no show on me, I'm sorry. It's the nature of the beast. It's just what it is. Okay. Now you can combat that if you want to increase your call volume massively, increase your resource or just play the numbers game that's proven because we have many people that no show and cancel on me. I landed them and they ended up being a real good ROI for our time and money. 
Then the final one, so 50% no-show reschedule ratio, if that's higher, A, you're either overselling on the phone, or B, you are, um, your um, a confirmation process is really, really weak. My suggestion is this, video text, stop using the word confirmation, it's weak. Hey, it's John, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow at 10 a.m., where we're going to talk about the only thing that matters, you and your business. I'll see you there. Now, how come a video, because I've made another deposit, see, they've got to consume it, micro commitment, the power of video, the unconscious brain can't discern the difference between a moving head on a cell phone, a laptop, a desktop, an iPad. The unconscious brain sees that moving head on the cell phone as TV. You do want to build authority. Enter in the back of the brain. Don't just do video because it just, it looks better, it's neat. No, think of the psychology of this, okay? And it's gonna move you further down this path of building trust, okay? So that naturally they join you. Now, again though, that, that one out of three joining you in, includes those that you would pick, not, you know, discern, ah, you're not a fit, and, and those that just don't choose you, with a caveat. If you've made 14 contacts with them of value, I had someone reach out, your system doesn't work. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I'm following. Good. Let's open up your CRM. Sally Smith. Oh, well, I see here you contacted Sally. You've had six. She's opened your drip email three times. You called her twice. You met with her once. That's six. Um, and what was the number? 14. So you don't even know yet. Right. Yeah, one question that we have um, that's kind of popping up here in the group is that 33% ratio that you're kind of talking about, is that after how many contacts? Is it kind of after the 14 of making a bunch of micro deposits where you kind of transition that over into like, hey, would you like to get together? Or how do you make that transition from providing value, providing value to eventually trying to ask for basically a phone call? Right. So two parts that I'm hearing, Jesse, is... is, is um, Number one, on average, 14 is that time when they join, if you look at that. So it takes 14 to the point where they'll join. Um, when do you transition? Now watch this. It's somewhat passive. When they raise their hand. Mm -hmm. Or now, now let me define raising your hand. Now early on, you want to be careful because you don't even want to go. You almost want to push away say, listen, you know, I want to make a suggestion to you. I wouldn't suggest that someone that has a business that's going on makes a decision that impacts their life in one meeting, maybe not even in two. So also what I'm doing too is I'm lowering their guard that way. I'm not playing takeaway. Mm -hmm. I'm just lowering their guard. So um, the, the other piece though is, you know, use your skills. You know, you're where you're at being leader, broker, owner, manager, because uh, you've got some sales skills. So, so where you can pivot in, if they haven't said, hey, listen, this is sounding great, Jesse, I want to join you. But if they're, if they're leaning in, whoa, wow, I mean, you, you've shown me more in, in, in two interviews and the emails you've sent me to my current brokers, well, then pivot, soft pivot. Well, mm -hmm. you know, um, based on what I'm hearing, it sounds like you might have an interest in how we could possibly work together, or am I hearing you wrong? Stay there because they'll ghost you. If you go to conversion too early, they're ghosts. They're gone. Right. Yeah. They sit through the interview, right? So well, I like the analogy of like dating, right? So many people are trying to go straight from first date to, you know, going home and then you got to like work your way down that path basically to earn your trust. So, you know, dating in, uh, in this kind of relationship building is almost identically the same. Yeah, it is. And so you've got a sense, you know, when can I, you know, hey, did you bond really good with that person? Sometimes your date takes longer to get to know someone, or, you know, so who knows, but still there's a process in this. So um, here's, there's, I'm going to give you guys three, three of the ways to recruit. I'm going to go kind of quick. My, my mistake that I make in the short time I do is I jam all kinds of stuff in, um, but uh, I just, you know, I want, I want you to hear it. So there's three ways, deposit withdrawal, what I'm talking about where we're making deposits in the marketplace and, and then we, we make withdrawals. We make withdrawals by getting them on the phone. That's a withdrawal, they're taking their time. Meeting with me is a withdrawal. Consuming my content is a withdrawal. Sure, I need to deposit, getting it to them. So I'm playing the deposit withdrawal game with them until I move them along the space where there's no like trust. Now there is a sharp angle point in time where you may be disco dancing with someone and you feel they're cool, you know, if you go to conversion, and, and you may go, John, I've been talking to this person forever. It's a big producer. It's a team for a brokerage. It's this even 
brokers do big teams. I say, you know, it's time for the, hey, Jesse, it's John. What the heck do we need to do to work together? So put some humor in it. When you, you know, when you've, when you've built that trust and built a relationship, yes, there's times where it's just better. Well, I wonder when they're going to join. No, there's times we go sharp angle. The second one that works really well, recruiting events. Now, here's the difference in my recruiting events, and that alone is one presentation on its own. We just did one in Calgary, had 100 people in the room, uh, Justin Haver, and it's going to have a great, we already have a great group of agents that are joining from that. You do a two, three hour training event. You invite all your, um, all the agents in that you want to have come in and you train them, you give them value. Most of the time we don't call to action. In that case, what I'll do in situations, if you have a massive brand and you know, like Justin's the number one Remax team in Canada. I mean, he's what number nine in the world. So his credibility, his authority, the, the curiosity, Lindahl too. Those guys are the type of guys where, you know what, and you look at their per person productivity, like best in the country. Their people do three transactions a piece minimum. You know, with them, there's such a value that's been built. They can go, but they're the few. They can go to conversion. But so events um, are one way to do it. And then rolling your agents, having your agents support you. So one of the things I want to share with you too, just real quickly, and and, and I know Jesse and I speak this same language, but I think many people miss it is. We're still pigeonholed in our industry and we're pigeonholed into scripts and dialogues. Well, what I want to suggest to you is think copywriting. You need to think copywriting. The people are going to win right now are not script and dialogue people. No, script and dialogue is middle school, okay? Copywriting is grad school. And, and copywriting is the words you say, the words you write, the scripting of all your language. But there's smart ways to do it. Why create something when you can use something based on neuroscience, which I did. This is called the SMIQ from one of my coaches. I'll always give proper attribution to Ryan LeBeck, who wrote the Ask Method. Mm -hmm. it's the most important question. When it comes to choosing a real estate company or team to work for, what's the single greatest reason that would keep you from joining? Please be as specific as possible. I surveyed a thousand agents, a thousand doing, I think it was five million and above. Okay. okay. I got all their, you know, this just gives you an example of some of the things they said. I put it in a word cloud. Um, anyone want to look on there and tell me how big the word commission is? See, right. you all know how a word cloud works. It brings out in size based on the words used most. Okay. Sure don't see, let's see, commission. Can anyone find fee or split in there? Oh, split. Split's tiny too. Business support. Lack is a word they use. Now, what I want to share with you is there's a lot of things that come from the SMIQ. I don't want to create cheesy dialogue. You know what I want to do? Guess what? This is my avatars. If I'm a recruiter, this is my avatars language. What brilliant salespeople, brilliant marketers do is they echo back the words their audience uses to them. So now what we have compiled here are the words that our avatar, our prospect, our recruit uses. So we're going to use the top 10 words in writing the subject lines and emails. Of, of, of writing um, text messages, of doing Facebook posts. You guys, it's 2019, you gotta get sophisticated. That's why there's outside forces that have jumped in our business, because we can get places, okay? So I just say that to encourage everyone. I've been in this thing for 31 years, hung around. Now, here's what happens when you get, get your message right, folks. I wanna, I'm gonna spoil some myths right here for you. Message to match is everything. I want you to notice there in uh, 28 days, see spam isn't how often you hit people. This is recruiting emails. 28 days, we sent nine emails to an audience that we progressed up. If you look at the third column from the right, it shows how many were sent. So I grew the audience up to number of people I'm sending to. You guys, who's getting 43% email open rates, sending an email every three days? <laughs> Bring it. This is from my platform. <laughs> I launched these and worked with the message, the subject line. So ladies and gentlemen, a couple of things that are universal in anything. Spam is not how often you send something. Spam is the quality of your message. Right. Okay. Uh, uh, but, but notice you guys notice the, the audience. This is sending the 6,600 agents and I'll tell you where Phoenix, Arizona. 6,600 people recruiting emails every three days, 43% email open rates. Get your message right. 
Everything I'm telling you about messaging is what was going into these, okay? Here's an example, here's two live ones. Stop talking over your audience. These are the drip campaigns. And you ready for this? Anyone that knows Douglas Elliman, a very she-she company in Long Island, this was their Long Island branch, targeting top agents. Look at the message. Four tips to drive. This is a drip email. This is a recruiting drip email, but you know what? People, oh, that's dumb. That's fine. Your ego's in the way. I've launched 100 million emails written by me through my email servers in the last 10 years. I might have empirical data more than anyone based on how people behave. I've written it, I measure it, and guess what? Less is more, keep it simple. These got massive email open rates, and when they called the experience agents afterwards, man, I loved it. It was the basics. Thank you for the reminders. Well, would yeah. you like to sit down? I'd love to. This is drip email marketing recruit. Period. Yeah, in a book, uh, you know, Brand Story, it's kind of interesting to talk about, you know, storytelling. And one of the things that they talk about is simplifying the messages because human nature is that you don't want to, you're designed to basically survive and part of surviving is burning the less amount of energy possible which basically makes us lazy by nature. And that's why we take the path of least resistance. And I think this really highlights that, that sense of four quick tips, easily digestible. It's not a big, heavy mental investment to understand what's going on there. And they get instant value that's digestible so quickly. So as you say, it's kind of an instant reminder. It gets them to open it because of that curiosity factor, that type of headline writing, which is kind of used by you know, whether it's BuzzFeed and, you know, all of the big online um, click, not necessarily clickbait because you're still trying, you're just trying to get it open. But that value of using curiosity and delivering real value in bite-sized chunks makes it so that they'll keep digesting it over and over so that you get the withdrawals that you're kind of talking about. Very, very powerful. 100%, 100%. Yeah, I, I uh, studied with uh, Donald Miller about three years ago, Story Brand. Great stuff. Okay, um, so here are the steps. You make a deposit. And again, I'm staying real high level because I'm just trying to give you guys a bunch. You make deposits. You've seen the, the items of value. You make a call. Did you get? Check in. Ask questions about what they did get. S say if it's something, how to, how to generate more business on Facebook. So tell me, how, are you currently generating enough, Facebook, um, enough uh, business on Facebook through Facebook ads? I'm not. I am. Great, you know, what's working, what's not working? When would be a good time to sit down, okay? That, you just stay in that space, pivot to the appointment, handle the objections in advance, make the promises. I'm not gonna talk about my company, I'm not gonna talk about your company. We're gonna talk about the only thing that matters, you and your business, okay? And here's an example of what happens. This is from callers that we have going. Uh, number of dials, number of conversations, number of nurtures, number of appointments. So this is pretty cool here. Uh, you know, this one right here recently, 58 uh, conversations. It's easy to talk about stuff, and but I like to pull the real stuff. 58 conversations, 25 appointments scheduled. When you're nailing your content, you're nailing the dialogue of what's worked, what's been proven year after year after year. Good things are happening for you. Now here's the piece, here's inside of a, a CRM, real quickly, for recruiting period. Notice the equation. Now the one thing, and, and, and see how many broker owner managers, team leaders have a recruiting system like this. The, the number one place the money is in your people, yet we spend millions on systems for one buyer. <laughs> it's worth nine, 10, 12 grand. One recruits worth a million, like a million dollars net over time if they stay. I want you to get it. So sure, you'll see the ratios are low here when you look at number of interviews only hired for. Now this, this, this illustrates though, we're still early on in the 14 contact phase, right? But you can see that we were, we're sending out coaching tips. Notice the different names, time money assessment tool, sphere of influence builder tool, um, confidential business assessment tool, confidential business, all tools, not rah, rah, we're wonderful. But you can see how the numbers come into play. My thing is this, is you'll continue to do good or you'll continue to struggle until you have a system that you're obsessed with at the same level you are obsessed with your 
generation of buy and sell leads and converting them, period, okay? And final piece that I just want to share, we all know this, but we all need to be reminded, y'all need to be using video. If you're not using video, you're a dinosaur. 55% of, of impact in recruiting, it's massive, massive. It's the game changer. 55% of the impact of communication, body language. Tell me how much body language there is on a cell phone, a text, an email. I got news for you. Three prong ain't going to win anymore. The person who brings the fourth prong video wins. And let me share with you what our friends at Nielsen Rating Company shared with us about that. Nielsen Rating Company was so fascinated by video on Facebook. Checking my clock here. I've gone over, which I always want to go, but I, I'm, I'm looking at my stop. Um, so they said, we're going to study video on Facebook. You guys, keep worrying about your hairline, your, your Botox, your wrinkly skin, your, you know, receding hairline. Keep worrying about it. Because the rest of us, we're not going to give to you know what, and we're going to win because three seconds of a video consume has a 44% cumulative impact on purchase intent. 32% impact on brand awareness and a 47% on ad recall. So, hey, you keep worrying about that and then keep wondering. And I, I just want to challenge you with love. So, you know, keep trying. Uh, you know? No, definitely, definitely makes sense because you're connecting on a much more human level at that moment in time. And, you know, the they can they're going to pass judgment out of which way when they see you anyway <laughs> so you might as well just get rid of that at the very beginning well and here's the thing <laughs> you know while you're worrying about what everyone thinks about you yeah they're, they're worrying what you think about them so we're all in this big freaking circle yeah. cycle yeah. okay yeah. And, and i love y'all but you're not that important that everyone's worrying about you sorry <laughs> you know? yeah very true so Very just keep that in mind. And here, real quickly, you know, this is the event recruiting traffic machine. We post an event, put a marketing video out there, just like coaches and trainers in the real estate industry do, like you did promoting this event. Okay. Facebook, Instagram, email, call them. And then we put them into a video a funnel that confirms autoresponder all the way up until the event, uh, a post event funnel. And then they, they text you and ask if they can join. Them. Right. Yeah. Hey, thanks for letting me attend. I'd love to meet and let me talk you into letting me join you. Okay. Right. So that, these are just high level pieces. Final piece is this enroll your agents in the recruiting. Stop giving them money. You don't have to. That's ridiculous. Right. I've tested. Okay. It's a cultural thing. You need mm -hmm. to frame into the value of collective genius and how the company grows, the hole's bigger than the part because a great leader builds culture based on community. Then you enroll them and then you acknowledge them when they help you. And here's the final tip. And I'll have about two minutes left. Um, is this, what is the one thing? Because it wasn't just a hook. It was not just a hook to get you here. What's the one thing that the elite are doing? Um, and, and, and many of the folks that you work with, you're out there with one of them there with, with Chris and yep. um, the whole crew. Um, here's the one thing that they're doing that people don't get. You got to acknowledge human beings. It's the number one human need next to food, water, air. They want to belong. What they're doing is they're consistently, publicly acknowledging their people. I can tell you, you'll think it's cool. You may run out and do it once. I'm going to tell you, it's the game changer. I can give you lists of names of people that I work with. And as Jesse knows, humbly, I'm very fortunate to work with the best in the world. Right. Their franchises rank them as that, you know, yeah. <laughs> like number one. You know, I've been to some of your events and I've seen the immediate impact when you share this tip in terms of acknowledging them, you know, on Facebook and congratulating them. And, you know, this is basic psychology. It's Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And that need, that sense of belonging and being part of something is, is very core to humans. And when you have the leader who acknowledges their people, um, you know, they basically re-acknowledge you. And the interesting thing that I've seen, you know, at some of your events personally has been those being shared because I'm friends with them on Facebook as well. And then watching their posts getting reshared by the person that was acknowledged. They're saying, aging. Like, hey, <laughs> look at it. And that's, that's, you know, this long leg of recruiting because that's it's a true. referral <laughs> at the end of the day. <laughs> you're watching happen. Yeah, your friends, so you're watching happen. We're talking yep. about my, my lead inner circle, my 61 on ones. We've yep. been sharing that a lot in the last week. Look at, 
I've, I've got one that did the, did her top five, all top five unsolicited, shared it, shared that, hey, I got this, I'm so fortunate, I'm with a company. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the agent that was recognized as top five and shares a post by their broker owner, team letter, who, who, who is that agent friends with on Facebook? Oh, your avatar, the people you're trying to recruit. Ta-da! It's so simple, you guys. So I've got a one minute hard stop here. I want to, uh, first of all, thank you, Jesse. I want to let y'all know, please thank text you. It's a, a downloadable document, um, value you can use even more beyond what we shared here. Text 657-444-1500 and then type in Cheplack. Type in Cheplack and you'll get a nice little download. Jesse, anything before I cut out on your end, brother? No, I think that's it, man. You've been super, super helpful. And I really appreciate, you know, everything that you've shared with us. Super. I, I don't think that people really understand how valuable it is to keep your recruiting machine because you can get, you know, get, get rid of that ebb and flow and just keep adding on and building that culture based on your own leadership and providing value. You're bringing in the people that are going to stick because they stuck initially they were attracted based on value and not based on commission. I think that's a massive takeaway that people really need to understand and it protects you, you know, on the, on the downside of those relationships because they're not built on money, you know, and that relationship is always going to be built on mutual respect of someone's knowledge. And I think that's huge, huge, huge. So, you know, I'm not as eloquent as you to summarize it, but I, I think that that's the, the big takeaway that I've seen and I've personally seen, you know, your actions in place with some of the people that I work with as well. And they've instituted your stuff and had big wins. So, you know, I just want to say thanks for sharing that stuff. It's really important. And hopefully it's of value to everyone that's listening to here uh, right now. So definitely. Awesome. Appreciate it. Well, I'm off to another coaching call. Thanks, brother. And thank you. All right. to thank you, sir. All right. All right. Thank you. You have a great day. Thank bye, you. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.